London is so well known for all the incredible things that it has on offer, but what are the highlights of the summer season? Well, in this video, I'm going to be sharing 10 great things that you definitely don't want to miss, whether you are a local or you are visiting for the summer. When I moved to London 11 years ago, one of the first things I fell in love with was the art scene here, and there is definitely so much to offer. But regardless of what your interests lie in, London definitely has incredible activities and events that will suit your taste. So in this video, I'm gonna be highlighting 10 that you might not wanna miss for this summer. First up is the Chelsea Flower Show held from the 24th of May through the 28th of May at the Royal Hospital in Chelsea. Reopening once again after the pandemic, the Royal Horticultural Society's Chelsea Flower Show is an incredible event for those who love all things gardening, flowers, and design. Expect to have to book well in advance, so while I'm sharing this event for you, with you for 2022, you can also add it for your 2023 calendar and grab those tickets before they sell out. From getting inspiration from the latest trends and cutting edge designs to adding your, to your houseplant collection, this is a gardener's paradise and a must visit. I went last year for the first time and really loved it. It's a fantastic day out with family and friends. Next up is London Fashion Week, and that is from the 11th to 13th of June across various locations um, of London and online. Discovering the latest trends, designers, and unique creations at the global event is definitely on the list for those who live for fashion. While most of the events across the four days are by invitation only, there are in fact even events with designers that you could attend by RSVP. The great thing about this year is that not only will there be access to in-person events, but there will also be digital events you can attend from the comfort of your home with no requirement to get dressed up. At number three, if you're looking for a historic, traditionally British event, then the Royal Ascot is definitely one to attend. The five days of races offer a variety of events, and this year it's being held at 14th, from the 14th through the 18th of June at Ascot Racecourse. Tuesday, 14th of June, kicks things off with a royal procession with three races in the afternoon. It's believed to be one of the best days for socializing and dining with a variety of delightful options, including champagne afternoon tea, a la carte luncheon, or even gourmet picnics. Let's now jump to Thursday the 16th, which is known as Ladies' Day, a day to see and be seen with high fashion and millinery pieces taking center stage. A perfect day for those who love fashion to come together at a prestigious gathering and follow racing's most elite stairs, locking horns for the historic Gold Cup. On the final day, the 18th, it's the fast-paced and busy day at the races, featuring the 1 million Group 1 Platinum Jubilee Stakes, which is one of the world's greatest international sprints, as well as Group 2 Hardwick Stakes and the Queen Alexandra Stakes, which is the longest race of the British flat season. There's plenty to enjoy at this last day at Royal Ascot. As it's such a highly anticipated event, it's often sold out quickly, so get your tickets well in advance. And number four, it is Wimbledon, which is this year is held from the 27th of June to the 10th of July at the All England Lawn and Tennis and Croquet Club. I don't know that you can think of England without thinking of Wimbledon. And I've been so lucky to have attended Wimbledon many times and it was such an incredible experience. If you're a lover of tennis or simply the tradition of strawberries and cream, pims and a Sunday afternoon on the hill, especially if you can't get tickets into the stadium, this is a must do. Wimbledon is the oldest and often most regarded and prestigious tennis event in the world. You'll see the biggest names in tennis as well as some incredible matches. It consists of five main events, four junior events, and seven invitation events, and the roster is jam-packed. At number five, we want to highlight the Henley Royal Regatta being held from the 28th of June to the 3rd of July in Henley on Thames. London's landscape is driven by the River Thames and the Henley Royal Regatta is a highly intended event on the river that attracts thousands of visitors each year. There are two ways to watch. To the general public can watch via the Regatta Enclosure, which is situated on the Berkshire Bank and is an ideal place from where families and supporters can watch the racing, including children of all ages. The Regatta Enclosure features riverside seating and open grandstand as well as a covered restaurant and a bar. If you're lucky enough to be a member or have a friend who's won, you can also watch the races from the stewards' enclosures. This is opposite the finish line with two grand slams, a prize tent and art gallery, as well as several bars and restaurants. 
You'll also have prime river seating and is open to members and their guests, including children from the age of 10. At number six is the British Grand Prix held the 30th of June through the 3rd of July at Silverstone Circuit. Silverstone is a national institution for anyone who loves cars and racing, being host to an array of different events throughout the year, from classic cars to drag racing. It's located in the North Hampshire villages of Towcester, Silverstone, and Whittlebury. It is the current home of the British Grand Prix, which is first hosted at the 1948 British Grand Prix. There are two days of qualifying and the final days of the race. The event attracts 300,000 people throughout the weekend and is more than just for Formula One fans. With the full experience offering a sort of festival-like um, environment with musical artists, street food, and even a show by the amazing Red Hours. Next up on the list is BST Hyde Park from the 24th of June to the 10th of July in Hyde Park. Speaking of festival-like atmospheres, if you love music, then the BST Hyde Park, also known as British Summertime, is a must-add to your calendar. The roster of performances is huge in terms of acts you could watch. The likes of Elton John on the 24th of June, the Rolling Stones on the 25th and 3rd of July. You'll want to head to the ticket site quickly so you don't miss out on these amazing artists. Adele will be in concert on the 1st and 2nd July, as well as Pearl Jam with special guests Stereophonics, Imelda May, The Last International, and more on the 8th and 9th of July, with the festival ending on the 10th of July with Duran Duran. Next up is Pride in London on the 2nd of July. 2022 marks the 50th year of Pride in London, and it's an incredible day out for the LGBTQ plus community and their allies. Starting at Hyde Park Corner and ending by Trafalgar Square, the parade has floats, exhibitors, and participants walking the route to express joy and celebration while highlighting the injustices and inequities that exist. The route is open to the public and is often busiest at Trafalgar Square, so if you want to be able to see anything in the parade at this spot, you'll want to get there early. Next up at number nine is the Underbelly Festival. It's held at Cavendish Square until the 31st of July, uh, Earl's Court 13th of May through the 16th of July. Combining award-winning entertainment with some of the best food and drink London has to offer, Underbelly Festival has two locations this year at Cavendish Square and Earl's Court, so you can enjoy epic entertainment during the summer. Cavendish Square plays host to the multi-award-winning cabaret show La Clique. Two large alfresco bars from Tarkin's, Cornish Gin, and Premium Pilsner, Prava, and a selection of incredible food vendors, including steak burgers by Smoked Teeters, Ooh Pulled, London Grill Fish Company, and Tandoori Tatka. Londoners can visit the festival from now until 31st July. Earl's Court is on the 13th of May through the 16th of July and has shows from Circus Abyssinia. Unfortunate in all things from comedy to circuit, circus and cabaret. Just like the Cavendish Square location, you can enjoy a selection of drinks from a variety of different bars, as well as soon to be confirmed food stalls galore. And finally at number 10, it is the Notting Hill Carnival, which is held from the 27th to the 29th of August in Notting Hill. I'm delighted to hear that the Notting Hill Carnival is back after the pandemic. This annual Caribbean celebration is led by members of the British West Indian community and the two days are filled with sound, color, food, and joy. This huge street festival attracts around a million people every year to Notting Hill and highlights Caribbean and Black diasporic cultures. Carnival includes influences from many other festivals around the world. If you can make it among the crowds of people, expect to be dancing all weekend. So what did you think of our 10 highlights of the London summer season? Do you plan to attend any of those that we've mentioned? If you like this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And of course, if it's your first time on my YouTube channel, please make sure to subscribe as we put out weekly videos about the London property market and highlighting some incredible things and places to experience here in London. If I missed anything on this video, maybe for next year, please make sure to leave me a comment and we'll also include links for some of the places we've highlighted in today's video. And if you want to know more about the daily activities of life in London, head over to Instagram and follow me there as I post daily videos about the property market and living in this incredible city. I'll see you on the next video.
Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos on my YouTube channel where I share great tips and information about the London property market and living in this fabulous city. So that's Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Bye for now.